For thousands of years, when someone died, they stayed dead until he changed everything. What happened and what does that mean for you and I? We're going to learn about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So first of all, what do you know about resurrection? How does your knowledge and beliefs about the Savior's resurrection impact you personally? We know that Christ died on the cross and he was buried in a tomb in clean linens. They sealed the tomb with a large stone and posted Roman guards to guard the tomb. Following the Sabbath, Mary Magdalene and a few other faithful women came to the tomb early in the morning. We're going to read Luke 24, 1 through 8. Look for what they found and what they learned. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. What did you notice from those verses? What do you think the disciples were thinking and feeling after what they saw and what they heard? Soon after this experience, Jesus also appeared to two disciples on the road to Emmaus. What manner of communications are these that you have one to another? As you walk and us sat. Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem and hast not known of the things which are come to pass there in these days? What things? Concerning Jesus of Nazareth which was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. When they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things, and to enter into his glory? Why do you think Jesus called them fools and slow of heart to believe? Why didn't they get it? Does Jesus ever walk with you? What's that like? Next, we're going to watch this video of how Jesus visited his disciples. Peace. Be unto you. Why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. Do you hear any meat? 
These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. Why do you think some of the first words the Savior spoke to them were, Peace be unto you? Why do you think the Savior would invite them to behold Him and touch Him before He shared His message with them? What do you think his disciples were feeling or learning from this experience? What do you learn from these verses and videos we've watched about who the Savior is and what he wants us to understand? So what does it actually mean to be resurrected? We learn from Enemy Online that the word root of resurrection means raising up or rising up from the Greek word and a stasis. In the verb form, it means to cause to stand or rise up, to rise from sleep or from the dead. And in the guide to the scriptures, we read, the reuniting of the spirit body with the physical body of flesh and bones after death. After resurrection, the spirit and body will never again be separated and the person will become immortal. Every person born on earth will be resurrected because Jesus Christ overcame death. Let's read that again. Every person born on earth will be resurrected because Jesus Christ overcame death. And so resurrection is a gift from our Savior for all mankind. Whether we believe in him or not, we will be raised from the dead to live again. Why do you think it matters that Jesus Christ has a body of flesh and bone? What is the significance of the Savior's resurrection in your life?
I want you to know that I know that the tomb was empty, that Jesus Christ was resurrected, and because he overcame death, all of us will live again and can be with our families forever. I invite you to find this out for yourself, and I share this message in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.